ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدل الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله عز وجل وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد indeed all praise belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one that we worship he is the one that we turn to in forgive for seeking forgiveness and he is the one that we turn to in seeking aid whomsoever allah uh, guides there is none to mislead him whoever is misled none can guide him except allah azza wa jal we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our own selves and the evil of our own actions. I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone who has no partners whatsoever. And I testify that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. After that, the best speech is the, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of all the matters are the newly invented matters into worship. And every newly invented matter into worship is misguidance. And every misguidance leads to the hellfire. Today we will try to clarify and mention some benefits from the topic the clear distinction between a Salafi and a Takfiri Khariji. The clear distinction between a Salafi and Takfiri Khariji. Because what has happened is that some people have become confused as to who are the people that are upon the correct path, the path that was followed by the first three generations of Muslims, and those who are have deviated away and fallen into this trap of shaitan, this deception of shaitan of uh, excommunicating Muslims and committing terrorist acts against the non-Muslims and the Muslims. So we want to give a clear distinction between who are the people on the correct path and those who have deviated in this aspect of terrorism and excommunicating Muslims outside the fold of Islam and fighting against Islam and the Muslims. So the Salafi, he is a person who tries and ascribes himself to the understanding of Islam as was understood by the first three generations of Muslims. The first generation of Muslims being the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how they understood Islam. And then the second, the, their, their, their successors and the, and the third, their successors. They were followed on from them, from amongst the people of knowledge and the people of Sunnah. So a Salafi is a person who, when he reads the Qur'an, he goes back and he checks and he asks, what, are, what is the tafsir of this ayah? What is the explanation of this verse in the Qur'an? And he reads the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and asks, what is the correct context of this hadith? How did the Sahaba understand this hadith, the companions and the tabi'een, those who followed them in succession? How did the, the great scholars understand this hadith? So we can put it, uh, pr pr uh, put it into practice. So this is a Salafi. And the Salafi will have, just like any other person, will have certain characteristics. And that's what we're going to look at today, inshallah. The, 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 the dis uh, this distinction or the characteristics that a Salafi has in comp com comparison to a Takfiri Khariji. A Takfiri Khariji literally is, is, is the same thing. The Qiri Khariji is literally the same thing. The Qiri is a person who ex excommunicates Muslims and places them outside the fold of Islam. He makes the Qiri of them. He excommunicates them. He says that this Muslim is not a real Muslim or he's not a Muslim. And he takes him out the outside the fold of Islam. He says he's not a Muslim anymore. Yani meaning that he's destined for the hellfire forever. And this is a, a wrong uh, belief. This is a wrong belief. Uh, this is contradicts the, the, the whole essence of Islam because the essence of Islam is to get people to come into Islam and accept Islam and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based upon knowledge 
and not kicking them outside the fold of Islam, not trying to get rid of them out of Islam, trying to excommunicate them. So this is what the 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 the, the Kfiri Khariji, so the, the Khawarij, were a sect that came in the very early times of Islam, uh, uh, and um, they were the ones that you know fought against the Muslims, and they put uh, placed the people outside the fold of Islam. So we will look at uh, some of their characteristics as well. So the Takfiri Khariji, the only reason we mention this separately, even though both of them are the same, is to show the, the, the uh, emphasis on who these people are. So when you come across a person who always saying, oh, such and such is not Muslim, such and such is not Muslim, without any basic evidence or anything like that, or any proofs, or contradicting the proofs of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, then you know he's a Takfiri Khariji, you know, the Khawarij. Okay, um, Sheikh uh, Abdulaziz Ibn Baz, rahimullah, he was asked a question. He said, what is your reply to the one who says, indeed, the aqidah, the belief of the Khawarij, was the aqidah of Salafiya, and the Khawarij are the Salafis. So then the Sheikh goes on to explain the difference between that, the difference between the the aqidah of the Khawarij and the aqidah Salafiya, because they are two completely distinct uh, things, they're matters, they're not the same whatsoever. Even though we find that the worldwide media, you know, they they pressing this uh, this point, saying that they are the same and the, the Salafis are the Khawarij and the Khawarij are the Salafis. Why? Because they want to st- uh, paint a bad picture of the Da'wat al-Salafiyya. And this has always been the case of the, the, those people who war against the Sunnah and the correct Aqidah because they don't want people to be a- access the correct Islam because if they do that they will enter into Islam afwaja in droves they will enter into, 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 into Islam afwaja yani in, in droves and droves because they will know that it's the truth then when they recognize the truth they will accept it and that's why they don't want that so they try to paint a bad picture of the Salafiyya and the Salafis to sh- say that they look at them, they're the ones that are terrorists, they're the ones, and, and then specifically they attack um, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala. They specifically attack Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, because of the, his uh, aqidah and foundation being upon Tawheed and teaching Tawheed and laying the foundation of Tawheed, and this is the most important thing for the Muslim. Anyway, coming back to this question, Shaykh Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala, answered, he said, this statement is false. The Prophet Sallallahu invalidated this with his statement about the Khawarij. So it's very clear that the Aqidah of the Khawarij is something different and the Aqidah of the Salafi and the Salafis are completely different. They're two distinct things. There's nothing that unites them, nothing that brings them close together, nothing because the, the Salafiyun are upon the truth and follow the way of the, the, the companions and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Whereas the Khawarij, the queries, they follow their desires and then they follow shaitan. The Ma'ariqa, or the Sheikh said, uh, the Ma'ar, Ma'ariqa, a sect from the Khawarij who would exit when they would, uh, uh, who would exit when there w- would arise division in my Ummah. A person would deem his prayer insignificant compared with their prayer and the reciting of the uh, Quran as compared with their reciting. Here, the, this uh, statement uh, where the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned the Ma'ariqa, he actually mentioned a name, a title from a sect, okay, of the Khawarij, who would exit the religion. Yani they will run out from the deen. They will apostate much quicker than anybody else. They will leave the religion. Then there would arise division in my ummah because they cause chaos and division amongst the Muslims. Whereas the Salafi, he calls to unity based upon the haqq. Not just based upon brotherhood in Islam, in, 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 of, of humans, or brotherhood in, in of unity, or brotherhood of nationalism, or anything like this. No, um, a Muslim, a Salafi, he calls to unity based upon the scale, upon the scale of the Quran and the Sunnah and the way of the Salaf. Otherwise, there can be no unity. A person would deem his prayer insignificant, insignificant compared with the prayer of the Khawarij. And his reciting of the Quran as compared with their reciting. They would exit Islam like an arrow goes through the hunted animal. Kill them wherever you meet them. 
since indeed in killing them there is a reward for the one who kills them, collected by Imam Bukhari. So this of hadith very, very clear how to deal with the terrorists, how to deal with these people. And the Prophet ﷺ gave us in, uh, the clear characteristics of these people. That they will leave the religion so fast. Do you see them practice Islam, practicing Islam for a very short period, very short period, and they become so extreme in everything that they do that they end up leaving the religion. They make takfir upon themselves. They make takfir upon themselves. And yani they excommunicate themselves because when they try to implement those extreme un Islamic rulings, the rulings of innovation, when they try to implement them, they actually backfire upon themselves. Say so they, they themselves leave the religion of Islam faster than an arrow leaves a hunted animal. Once you've sh shot the arrow, when it goes through the animals so quickly, um, that, that's, what, uh, how, that's the comparison in how quickly they leave the religion. And then the Prophet ordered the one, the, 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 the one in authority, in, 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 in power, to fight them, to kill them, the khawarij, the terrorists, kill them, wherever you meet them. Indeed, there is a reward for the one who kills them. And this is the hadith in Bukhari. In another hadith, in another wording from the Prophet, so the Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Aziz ibn Abbas continues, in another wording from the Prophet Sallallahu where he said about the Khawarij that they are, they the Khawarij, kill the people of Islam and leave alone the idolaters. A hadith collected by Imam Bukhari. So the Prophet Sallallahu is telling us that yes, they have hatred for the non-Muslims, but their hatred for the Muslims is even more, even more. Because they say, the Khawarij, the terrorists, these evil people, they say, that the sin of the, the Muslim who commits a sin, the sin of a Muslim who commits a sin, or the mistake that he makes, is greater than that of the one who, who, who is a non-Muslim. So they say, you, you call yourself Muhammad, you call yourself Khalid, you have this Muslim name, yet you do this sin. So because of that, you are outside the fold of Islam. This is what the Qiri is. The Qiri, what he does, he comes to you and he says, oh, you committed this sin? And that's it, you fall outside the fold of Islam. This is not the case. This is not the case because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a factor in our religion which is repentance. Repentance, a person can repent. Allah loves that his worshippers uh, repented to him because Allah created us with this weakness of sinning, that we commit sin. This is a natural thing. But the, 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 the correct way is that we uh, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, we try to keep away from sin as much as possible. But because of our, our, our human weaknesses, we fall into it. And then we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. Allah loves it when we return back to Him. When we turn to Allah in, uh, in for, for our needs, uh, for forgiveness, uh, for, for tranquility. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. So we have this factor in our religion. And yet the Khawarij, they make it out, these terrorists, they make it out that there is no, nothing like this. You can't repent. You can't turn back and say sorry and uh, ask uh, beg Allah for, for forgiveness. You can't do that. So they abrogate or they invalidate a whole factor, a whole section of our, our religion. whole section of our religion. And that sh shows you how uh, ignorant they are and how foolish they are. You know, the, the, the foolish people, and the Prophet also mentioned this about them. So the Khawarij, they kill the people of Islam. They say, see, you've committed a sin, you outside the full of Islam, we're told to kill you. And this is extremism, extremism. You know, and this is not allowed in Islam. Uh, the Sheikh says, it is known from the Aqidah that they excommunicate, make the kafir of the, sin, of the sinful from the Muslims, and they judge that the sinful are not, are in the hellfire for eternity. And this is why Ali, radhi anhu, radhi Allahu anhu, fought them likewise did the companions and other than them so Ali fought them and killed them on the day of Nahrawan may Allah be pleased with him and all the companions Allah is the one who gives success so it's very clear from what Shaykh Abdul Aziz Ibn Ubaz mentioned that the, the Aqidah Salafiyah is one thing and the Aqidah of the Khawarij is something completely alien to Islam it has nothing to do with Islam whatsoever just like all the other isms Buddhism uh, Sufism, 
all these have nothing to do with Islam whatsoever. They people have manipulated, manipulated the, these things and try to bring in uh, into Islam these type of uh, thoughts and ideas and beliefs. And but Islam is very, very uh, is free from what they say. It's very clear when somebody reads the Quran, when he reads the Hadith, when he asks, reads the, the statements of the companions, asks the scholars the correct context of these verses. And it's very clear that these, these, all these isms of Sufism and um, all these type of different isms have nothing to do with the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the main distinctions that the Salafi has is in belief. That's where it begins. It begins with that which the Iman is in the hearts. It begins with that. So what is the distinction? The Salafi believes that the weakness of the Muslims is due to their sins of which the greatest is committing shirk with Allah. This is how the Muslim, this is what the Salafi believes, that the weakness that we're facing of the Muslims, the, the difficulties, the torture, the oppression, and all these matters, is due to their own sins. Yani not those particular people, but the Muslims together. Muslims together, because we're one unified uh, ummah. Okay, so it's our sins, uh, all of us together, which uh, which causes the weakness of the Muslims together, okay? So we don't put the blame on somebody else like the Khawarij do. They put the blame on somebody else, but we shoulder this responsibility. We say, yes, it, uh, the better we are, the better out the situation of the Muslims will be. Uh, the, the, so the Salafi believes that the weakness of the Muslims is due to their own sins. Uh, Regarding this point, there's a, a narration from the Prophet ﷺ who said, and this is authenticated by uh, Sheikh Al-Bani, it's a hadith collected in Bukhari, in Abu Dawood, in Sunan Abu Dawood, uh, where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, if you deal with interest, hold on to the tales of cows, become pleased with agriculture, and leave off jihad, Allah will afflict, afflict you with humiliation, which will not be removed until you return to your religion until you return to your religion okay so this shows us the weakness of the muslims is due to their sins so they start dealing with interest they start dealing with riba in the banks and they start putting their money into banks and trying to increase the amount that they get, they get back for doing nothing just putting leaving that money in the bank and this is not in the way of the muslims this is not the way of the salafi he doesn't leave his money in the bank to obviously there's certain you know conditions and stuff like that but he doesn't deal with interest, he keeps away from interest as much as he can. It is very difficult and it's a, it's a sign from the signs of the Day of Judgment that everybody will be inflicted, sorry, afflicted with uh, interest. And now, you know, it's very, very difficult to live, you know, in this modern world uh, without having to deal with interest. But, you know, a person tries his best as he possibly can to keep away from it. Holding on to the tales of cows, yani chasing after the dunya, chasing after and becoming and, and becoming uh, hold on to the tales of cows, become pleased with agriculture, yani just chasing after the dunya. That's all the biggest concern that a person has, at amount of wealth that he can amass at the cost of his religion. No, a person can be rich, a person can do business, a person can earn wealth, but he has to have his religion foremost, foremost. And leave off jihad, and, and, and leaving off jihad, the correct jihad. We're not talking about this chaos which occurs in some Muslim countries like Syria, Afghanistan, and these type of places. Or this is not jihad. This is not jihad whatsoever. Jihad has rules and regulations like every other aspect of the religion of Islam. And jihad is not killing innocent people. It's not killing uh, uh, women and children. It's not indiscriminately blowing up places. This is not jihad. This is terrorism. This is terrorism, and Islam is free from all as aspects of terrorism. There's no terrorism. Terrorism is not allowed. You're not even allowed to say, you know, to scare another Muslim. You're not allowed to scare a person, a non-Muslim, an animal. It's not allowed in Islam. There's hadith of the Prophet, so I'm mentioning that. Do not scare uh, your, your fellow Muslim. So you're not allowed to scare an animal. Well, how can you carry out, you know, terrorist acts? bombings and these type of things in in public places and that, that type of stuff and then they claim though no we're fighting against the government no you're not 
You're not fighting against the government. Oh, we're fighting against the uh, army. No, you're not fighting against the army. This is not the way it's done. The, the conditions, you have to have a Muslim ruler. Uh, it's not based upon chaos and... Uh, and um, it's, but it's rather it's, it's, it's based upon certain conditions that you have to have. So leave off jihad. And in this hadith, the, 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 uh, the answer is there, the solution is there. It's not because of jihad, because a lot of the takfiris and khawarij and these type of people, they come along, they say, the terrorists, they say, see, the ha this hadith says, and leave off jihad. Okay? And then we have to go back to jihad. And they uh, hype up the youngsters who have no knowledge whatsoever, and they say, this is what we need to do. We need to hype up and, you know, we, uh, sorry, they hype up these people and they cause them, uh, uh, tell them about all the horrible things that are going on in torture and oppression in the non-Muslim lands or the Muslim lands of the Muslims and they say that's why we have to rebel. That's why we have to fight. No, this is a poison. This is a poison. The Prophet said, uh, uh, Allah will afflict you with humiliation. So it's Allah will afflict you with the humiliation, which will not be removed until you return to your religion. Until you return to your religion, the correct religion, the correct, the sunnah. Not what, you know, the, uh, the, 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 these followers of, of, of uh, Sufi sects and uh, so-called modernist thinkers and you know, uh, these uh, people who try to uh, assimilate to the ways of the non-Muslims or these people who try to assimilate themselves and find unity with the Shia Rafid the Shayateen yani, no, it's not that until you return to your religion or until you return to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is the foundation of the religion until you turn to the Sunnah along with the Quran to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam according to the understanding of the the Salaf the righteous Salaf the, the, the companions and the and the, the tabi'in, atba tabi'in and the great scholars that followed on, on their path until you return to your religion until you understand what did the Prophet ﷺ believe so the solution is there and not in what the, they say so the Salafi believes that the weakness of the Muslims is due to their own sins of which the greatest is committing shirk with Allah okay and there's another hadith which explains this that is due to their own sins the Prophet ﷺ said, By him in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad, there are no two people who love each other and they split up due to a sin that one of them commits. They split up, they used to love each other for the sake of Allah. They used to love each other for the sake of Allah and they split due to a sin that one of them had committed. So that's why it's important for the Muslim that he repents to Allah and goes back to Allah and asks for forgiveness of Allah and learns about the religion. And the, the greatest sin that a person can commit is shirk. And our Muslim countries are full of this. Subhanallah. Any Muslim country you go to, because of the ignorance of the Muslims and the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, shaitan working overtime, working overtime, making sure that the people remain ignorant of their religion, so they commit shirk and fall into shirk, okay? And... Uh, the, 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 they have the, 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 the Muslim countries and the Muslims become humiliated and debased and, and put down. So the Sheikh said, uh, so, so here, this is why the, the, the Salafi's most single important concern is Dawah to Tawheed. His most important concern is Dawah to Tawheed. And Tawheed is. Um, uh, uh, Tawheed is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, alone without any partners. It's, it's, it's ifrad, singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with worship. Okay? And following the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's his, most, that's his biggest concern. The Salafi, the, the most important concern he has is following the, uh, is, 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 uh, giving, calling, uh, being upon Tawheed and calling to Tawheed and following the Messenger. Also, we find that we understand, the Salafi understands also any sinful Muslim is under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either Allah will forgive him or punish him, but he will not remain in the hellfire forever, except for the person who dies upon shirk. So this is another belief that the, that the Salafi has, the Muslim has, that any sinful Muslim is under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is so merciful. Allah is so merciful that Allah can forgive anything and everything. Okay? 
except for a person who dies upon shirk because Allah has promised that in the Quran okay so either Allah will forgive that person or either Allah will punish that person but he will not remain in the hellfire forever as for the takfiri yeah they believe that the weakness of the Muslims is due to the authority of the rulers and them overpowering the Muslims this is what the takfiri believe they believe that our weakness our, our humiliation of the Muslim ummah is due to the rulers and that's what they, they claim they always jump up and down and they start com com complaining so look at the rulers look how they are spending our wealth look at what they're doing look at how they're making unity with the non-muslims look how they're oppressing the muslims don't you see such and such muslim he stands up and he does a khutbah against the ruler okay he hypes up the muslims against the ruler and the ruler clamps down upon him well, what do you expect what did you expect what did you expect is that the way the Prophet did it? Is that the way the companions did it? Is that the way of the Sahaba? Is that the way of the Salaf? No. It was not permissible to rouse up the, the, the rabble, the people, against the Muslim ruler. And the Prophet gave us advice of how to advise the Muslim ruler. And it is not by uh, rebelling against him. And it's not by contradicting him. It's not by openly you know, giving lectures against him or khutbah against the Muslim ruler. So this is what the takfiri believe. So it's very clear the distinction between the 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 belief of the Salafi as regards the Muslim victims of the Muslims and the belief of the takfiri. So uh, so we find that this is why the takfiri declares the rulers not to be Muslims. This is why we find the takfiri declares the rulers not to be Muslims. And his most single important concern is fighting the rulers and removing them from authority. This is the way of the takfiri. He says his most single concern is fighting the rulers and removing them from authority. So the only way they can fight against them, they say, oh, you see these people? They're kuffar. You know, this king, he spent so much money on a yacht, or he spent so much money on a palace. Oh, he has golden chairs and thrones in his house. So he wasted all this money. He is a kafir. He's not a Muslim. The scholars have mentioned that the hardest thing that they ca to, to do, the hardest thing that they find that for them to do, is to excommunicate a m Muslim. You need to take a Muslim outside the fold of Islam. This is the hardest thing to do, because it is a responsibility on the day of judgment, a responsibility to you know to 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 give that verdict. Okay, and that's why they're very careful in giving that verdict. Giving that verdict. So the takfiri he fights against the rulers, and he says we have to remove them from authority. We have to place ourselves into authority. And when they do place themselves into authority, they cause so much chaos, they cause so much fitna, and they end up supporting those who um, have the aim of destroying Islam. And we saw this recently in Egypt, when Ikhwan al-Muslimun the Egyptian organization, the Khwan Muslimun, took power and they wanted to bring in the Shia Rafida. They wanted to bring in uh, to, uh, uh, the Shia Rafida and they sent uh, hundreds and hundreds of people to go study in uh, Iran uh, to study the Shia religion. And this is the way of the Khwan Muslimun that they want to, uh, all their, their, their methodology is to unite. The Muslims based upon Bida and that they want to unite the 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 Rafida who curse the Prophet ﷺ, who curse the, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, and say bad things against the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, the Shia Rafida this is their beliefs and this is what the Ikhwan Muslim want to do they want to seek unity with them and just just to get to the 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 thro the, the the to get the authority over the Muslims. So this is what the Takfiri believes. The Muslim, the Salafi believes that his most important thing is call the people back to Allah, and that the Takfiri says, no, we have to fight against the rulers. Clear distinction. Clear distinction. Okay, we give authority to Allah; they want authority for themselves. Because you'll find the Khawarij and the Takfiris, the terrorists, it's always about themselves. It's not about the religion. It's not about the religion. They say when we come into power. No, for the Muslim, the Salafi, he says. We ask Allah to put somebody in power who will be good for the Muslims. We don't want authority. We don't want that authority. We want you know, Allah to place someone 
uh, over us who will be good for us to allow us to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala okay but they say no we want the kursi we want the power we have the authority we know what we're doing and this has always been the, ca the case with the Kiris and the Khawarij the Takfiri excommunicates and declares any sinful Muslim to be a non-Muslim and confines him to the hellfire for eternity. So this is the uh, the, the belief of the Khawarij. The Salafi, in another point, regards those who support security and the Muslim armies to be their Muslim brothers. They make dua for them for goodness and guidance. Okay, This is the way of the Salafi, that he says that any, any Muslim armies are their Muslim brothers. And why not? Why not? Even if a, a Muslim joins a Muslim army or in, in a Muslim country, then that doesn't take him outside the fold of Islam. Since when does that take him outside the fold of Islam? There's no proof whatsoever for that. And rather, we make dua for them for goodness and guidance. The Prophet said, if a Muslim makes dua, supplicates for his brother in his absence, then the angel says, Amin, and the same for you. And the same for you. The takfiri, however, he regards those who support security and the Muslim armies to be non muslim Apostates, having left the deen of Islam. They see, see, you're upholding a rule which is, is man-made. You're upholding a rule which is man-made. They have the traffic light. When you come to a red traffic light, you stop your car. This is a man-made rule yeah, for the safety of, the, of, of people. Yeah. This is a man-made rule. Where does it say in the Quran and the Sunnah that you, you, have to, you, you have to stop at a red traffic light? No. These are man-made rules. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the intelligence and wisdom and intellect to be able to understand, differentiate between that which is worship and that which is not worship. That which is worship and that which is not worship. So, in everyday rules and regulations, there's nothing wrong with the, uh, obeying the, 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 the law. The law which is, is set down as, not as worship but as you know, uh, everyday survival. Everyday survival, you know. And this is where the takfir is, they come and put these doubts in. They see, see, man made laws, man made laws, man made laws. You're obeying the man made laws. This is all you know, deception and um, uh, trying to trick the weak Muslims who have no knowledge and the youngsters especially. And then they hype them up, and then they show them videos, and then they move them further and further up to say, this is what you need to do. We need to go out and do an operation for the sake of Allah, being entered into paradise, and these type of you know, rubbish statements that they make. No. Going, getting into paradise is by f following, uh, being upon Tawheed, following the Sunnah of the Messenger, implementing Islam in its correct context. So this is a couple of few of the points regarding the belief of the distinct belief of the Salafi and the Khariji Takfiri. The Salafi is not like a Takfiri in Manhaj, in methodology. In Manhaj, methodology, which is the actual practical implementation of the, of, of the Sunnah, the Salafi is not like that. The Salafi keeps away from the people of Bid'ah and warns against changing the religion. Okay, The Salafi keeps away from the people of Bid'ah. Of, of Bid'ah Bid is innovation in the religion bringing new matters, uh, aspects of religion, okay, deen, okay, anything which is something that which the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions didn't do as an aspect of worship. So the, the Salafi keeps away from these type of people, especially their leaders, their, their, their educated ones, okay, from the people of Bidda, and he warns against changing the deen, because this is what the, the Ahlul Bidda do, they change the religion of Islam to suit themselves, or they introduce new things into the religion to suit themselves, follow their desire. The Takfiri, he unites with the people of Bidda, aiding in destruction, the perfection of the religion. Okay? The Takfiri unites with this, the people of Bidda, and you find them being on the same platform. You find them being on the same platform as, 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 as the, the misguided deviant Ahlul Bidda, giving lectures and, and, and finding unity with them. And that's why we find Ikhwan al Muslimun, like I mentioned before, the example. Ikhwan al Muslimun, and he, these people, these evil people, finding unity with the Rafid, the Shayateen, uh, the Shia, in, de in the destruction of the perfection of the, of the religion. The Salafi is not like the Takfiri in aspects of worship even. Even in the aspects of worship. Uh, is not like the Takfiri. The Salafi is moderate in his worship. 
following the Prophet Sallallahu and the Salaf. Okay, this is the way the Salaf is. He's moderate in his worship. He's not extreme in his worship. He follows whatever the Prophet Sallallahu did. He doesn't do. Uh, he doesn't go to an extreme, and uh, rather. The whole aspect is about quality, not quantity. Not quality and not quantity. Not quality of this worship and not the quantity of worship. So you find somebody, he'll, 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 he'll get up and he'll pray, you know, long, 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 long prayers just to show the people. Uh, we don't know what is in his heart, but, you know, from the apparent, you know, uh, to show the people. Or that he actually professes it and says, yeah, see, I get up and pray to her church, oh, from this time to this time, and he boasts about it, okay? No, the, 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 the consideration is the quality of that prayer. How was the, the khushu that you had in it? Why didn't you try to hide it from the people? Why are you trying to boast and brag about what you do? So the consideration is not by a lot of worship. So Shaykh al-Albani, he said, the consideration is not by a lot of worship, but rather is being upon the sunnah and far away from bid'ah. It's not by a lot of worship, but rather being upon the sunnah. So doing it correctly uh, is quality is the most important thing. That's the most important thing regarding worship. And it's not... It's not by doing lots and lots of worship. Okay? Also, the uh, Shaykh Uthaymeen mentioned, he said, Husn al ibadah aham min kathrat al ibadah. Worship which is good or correct is more important than a lot of worship. Worship which is good is more important than a lot of worship. And that's why we find the Khawarij, as the Prophet explained, that they will outdo you in their prayer, the amount of prayer that they do. So you'll feel yourself insignificant. Oh, subhanAllah, look at me, I only do this much. So a weak Muslim who doesn't understand the sunnah, uh, uh, a person who has weak iman, he'll come along and see the Khawarij terrorists and say, oh, see, look how much they're doing, they're sacrificing so much. And look at me, I'm not doing anything, okay? I'm not doing anything. But this is a deception. This is a deception because we're looking at the quality and the correctness of... Uh, um, a worship and not the the quantity not the quantity because the khawarij their prayer I would outdo so much so that some of the sahaba mentioned when Ibn Basr who went to debate the khawarij he said their hands had become so rough and coarse and their foreheads had a huge like you know the skin had, be, had peeled and the skin had become hard because of the 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 uh, 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 the, uh, the the increase of or the uh, a, a lot of sajda that they did prostration and putting their hands you know in prayer on the hot floor yani on the hot hot ground we know that the prophet sallam from the sunnah when it was too hot yani especially here in, in uh, the arabian peninsula when it used to get too hot that the prophet sallam would even delay the dhuha prayer they would even delay the Doha prayer. But the Khawarij, they would never do this. They would never do this. They go to extremes. They force themselves to have extremism in their worship. So it shows they're not on the correct path. It shows that they're not following the Prophet ﷺ. Likewise, when the, the woman came and she said to Aisha Radha she said, do I have to make up my prayers that when I'm on my, my menses? Uh, do I have to make up those prayers? And Aisha Radha mentioned, are you from the Hururiya? The Hururiya were a sect from the Khawarij that broke away from Ali Radha and went off into, uh, uh, into a valley and they lived there. And in, to show that this is not correct, Aisha Radha said, said this to show that it's not correct. Because the only thing a, a Muslim woman who has, uh, was on her menses, the only thing that she makes up for is a fast of Ramadan that she missed. A fast of Ramadan that she missed because she was on her menses. As regards the prayer, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his mercy has forgiven the daughters of Adam alayhi salam by that when they, they come across this natural uh, time period that they are given relief from uh, having to pray and they don't have to even make up for it. That's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this woman, she wanted to make up for it. You know, so the Aisha said, are you from those people? Those extremists in worship? Okay, extremists in worship? No. 
this is not the way of the the, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that he is moderate in his worship. That doesn't mean that we give up on following the Sunnah. No, we implement the Sunnah. We follow the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even if it, we find it a bit difficult, as long as it's established in the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the correct context of the correct uh, uh, manhaj methodology, and then we follow the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even if we might find it difficult, even if we might find it difficult, okay, but we don't uh, give up on it. So the quality is more important than the quantity. Yeah, the quality is more important than uh, the quantity. And this has been, uh, you know, been mentioned from the Prophet ﷺ himself as regards the way of their, of the, of the khawarij that they would. You know their prayer, their recitation of Quran, their fasting, everything. To the extent that at the end of the hadith, the Prophet also mentioned they would recite the Quran, thinking that it supports them, whereas it is an evidence against them. Subhanallah, it's a very important statement here from the hadith of uh, Ali radhiallahu right? Uh, in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet also said they will recite the Quran, thinking that it supports them. They read in Quran and they think that it supports them. The evidence is in Quran because they've taken it out of cor the correct context. The correct context is the understanding of the Prophet ﷺ. But they've taken it out of the correct context and they think it supports them. And we find that this is the methodology, the manhaj of every person from the Ahlul Bidah. Every group and person from the Ahlul Bidah, they try to justify. They try to justify by twisting and, and, and distorting the texts and interpreting the text according to their own intellects. So they say, see, the Qur'an supports me. Quran supports me. Even a thief, a robber will say that the Qur'an supports me because he says Allah created everything for, for us. Okay? And, oh, the woman that doesn't want, to, want, to, want, doesn't want to cover herself up, she says, oh, see, it just says covering. You know, it doesn't say specific. No. Look at the correct context. What was the way that the Prophet taught the women to cover? Yeah, for the women to cover themselves and this is how we understand the religion it's not based upon that oh I read a verse in the Quran and I understand it like this no it's not based upon that okay so it will be an evidence against them like the Prophet said then he said their prayer does not go beyond their throats their prayer does not go beyond their throats and their recitation their reading of the Quran does not go beyond their throats meaning and the scholars have mentioned that Iman doesn't enter their hearts that Iman doesn't enter their heart. So they read Quran, they pray, but that does not affect their heart. It does not affect their heart. For the Salafi, the Muslim, every time, because of that sincerity in his heart, that's the foundation of it all. The foundation of it all is the heart. So the, every time he reads or prays, reads Quran or prays or anything like this, he finds that his heart, his iman increases. He feels, he feels this sweetness he feels this iman, this faith, yani this strength yani of this love for Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, this greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal, love for the Messenger Sallallahu in following the Prophet Sallallahu So he feels this increase every time he reads the Quran and the Hadith. The Salafi is not like the Takfiri in Akhlaq, in manners. He's not like him in behavior. The Salafi is very clear in how he is. The Salafi has nur on his face. He has light on his face. Always smiling and gives salams to whom he knows, to whom he does not know. Okay, he gives salams. Uh, he's smiling. He gives salams to uh, to the one who, whom he knows and whom he does not know. But why he has nur on his face? He has light on his face because he has followed the sunnah. When a Muslim is upon tawheed, when the Muslim is upon the sunnah, you can see the light, the beauty on his face. You can see the iman on their faces. Because Allah gives that, Allah gives that, and that's the distinction between uh, how we view beauty. We don't view beauty as the Western media explains it to us. No, we view, view beauty as iman. So it's the actions, the iman and actions of a Muslim that beautify him, beautify him. So when, and this is advice for the, the uh, for, uh, for brothers who are looking for spouses. Or sisters looking for a, a, a spouse for a husband that don't look at the outward yani, uh, appearance yeah it's important 
but not as important as the inward, the inside. The inside is better, is more important. The whole package is very important. Don't look, don't be superficial and say, oh well, you know, she's drop, drop, drop dead gorgeous, so you know, I want to marry her, you know, and that's it. No, look at the whole package, and likewise from the, for, the, for the sister looking at the brothers, for men, for, work, uh, for, for marriage. So the Salafi has nur on his face, and he's always smiling, and the Prophet said, smiling in your brother's face is charity, sadaqah for you. So giving a smile for your Muslim brother is sadaqah, it's charity. And he gives salam. The Prophet said, there are no two Muslims who meet and shake hands except they are forgiven before they separate. Uh, to whom he knows and whom he doesn't know. The Prophet said, in another th uh, part of Islam, what part of Islam is the best? And he mentioned from that, is that give salam to the one whom you know and the one whom you do not know. From Bukhari Muslim. And that's in, in, in contrast, in complete opposition to the takfiri. The Salafi is happy, smiling, giving salams, you know, uh, 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 wanting to increase brotherhood. The takfiri has darkness in his eyes. Always miserable. Yeah? He does not hasten to give Islam, a salam, to give salam. And if he is given salam, he only responds by indicating or nodding with his head. Okay? The only... No the Prophet mentioned the believer is friendly. The believer is friendly. There is no good in the one who does not take friends and cannot be befriended. The way of the Prophet was that he would be easygoing. Easygoing. Anybody, a small child can grab, could grab the Prophet's hand and take him to wherever he wanted, wanted, to, uh, wanted that, uh, to go. The little child wanted to go. And this was the way of the Prophet that he was easygoing. He wasn't harsh. He was gentle. And this is what we need to do. We need to, for the, for the, for the Muslims, we need to build up this, this uh, characteristic of being gentle and easygoing. If it's something a matter of the dunya, it doesn't matter. No problem. You know, we can, we can deal with it later. It's no big deal. You know, I, it doesn't have to be my way. No problem. Okay? So, uh, the takfir the, the is always dark and he's always miserable. He's not smiling. Yeah? He doesn't want to give salam. And when somebody gives salam, he just nods with his head. But the Prophet Allah commanded us, when you are greeted with a greeting, with, uh, with a salam, greet in return with that which is better, or return to it, return it equally. The Salafi is not like the takfir in giving da'wah. When you hear the Salafi speaking, you hear him say, Allah said, the Messenger said, the Salaf said, the scholars said. And this is what knowledge is. Knowledge, beneficial knowledge, is what Allah and His Messenger said, and what the companion said. This is what Ibn Qayyim uh, said. So he's not like that. That's why you hear him. That's why he's constantly, because he's learning the Quran and the Hadith. As uh, Takfiri, what do you hear him saying? You hear these terrorists, or you hear them say, Sayyid Qutub said, Bin Laden said, Abu Qatada said. They bring these evil people, these deviation, devi uh, de deviants, and they quote them. Who have no uh, knowledge of the uh, the deen, have no knowledge of the religion. Rather, like Said Qutb was a journalist, Egyptian journalist. Okay, we found the Ikhwan Muslim. Bin Laden is, is, uh, was a businessman. Uh, these type of people, they don't have knowledge of, of the religion. And the little knowledge that they have is deviant knowledge. It's taken out the correct context. So the Salafi says, Qala Allah. Allah said in the Quran, the Prophet said, the Salaf said, and you hear the takfiri and these other people, they, they're quoting these uh, deviant individuals. When a Salafi wants to give da'wah to someone, he tells them about Tawheed and its divisions and the Aqidah. And then he gives them a book or an audio about the Aqidah by the senior people of knowledge. And this is the way of the... We, we just, uh, our thing is just telling the people, not forcing them, you know, not um, uh, forcing them and pushing them and these type of things. No, we just politely, uh, you know... Um, uh, remind people, politely remind people and educate them. When a takfiri wants to give da'wah to someone, he tells him about jihad. He hypes him up about jihad. Then he gives him a video with uh, video clip which has anashid and these type of things and combat training in the mountains of Afghanistan and self-exploding jihadis in Iraq. And they say, this is the way of giving da'wah. You know, I mean, this is the way that we're going to move forward. No, 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 no. This is rather the, uh, the way that will take us back, digress. Uh, take is Islam back uh, further away. And the takfiri's way of giving da'wah is imitating the kuffar by going out on protests and demonstrations. You'll find them, the heads of these takfiris, uh, you'll find them at the front row of demonstrations and protests. 
hey, this is the way of the kuffar, the way of the non-Muslims. It's not the way of the Muslims. The way of the Muslims is to teach and educate the people on the basics of the religion. Bring their iman up. Teach them the basics of the religion. And Allah will give them success. Whether in the dunya or in the hereafter. So by this we find that the, uh, the, there's a very clear distinction between the Salafi, the one who calls to Islam based upon the correct sources, and the, 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 the Kfiri who follows his desires and excommunicates the terrorists who excommunicate Muslims and they uh, uh, cause uh, terrorism around the, around the globe. So it's a very clear distinction, very, very clear distinction. Jazakumullah khairu for listening. May Allah reward the brothers who organized these lectures. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. Anta astaghfiruka wa tubu alayk.